What is the law on surrogacy in your country? How has it changed over time? And it, do you think it's going to change now? If it exists, how is surrogacy regulated? In Italy, surrogacy is prohibited and punished by law as a crime, but only if it is carried out in Italy. The law doesn't, doesn't punish surrogacy if it's carried out abroad. This is a truly absurd situation. Uh, in France, they, they speak of fraud à la loi, fraud à la loi, uh, when they make surrogacy abroad and then come back in it, to Italy, they use the argument of the child's good, uh, its wellness, uh, and its, his rights. Generally, in the cultures of Mediterranean Europe, the cult of Mother Mary is very strong. So you can understand that the most of the public opinion is against surrogacy. And when properly informed about it, can only fight it. One of the horrors I recently came across an agency with office in Spain, a clinic in Ukraine, that guaranteed that if child uh, dies in the first year of his life, they make you another one included in the price. Uh, the vast majority of media in, it, in Italy, apart from Catholic media, doesn't uh, uh, correctly inform about surrogacy. When they talk about surrogacy, they tell sweet and uh, compassionate stories of love, uh, especially the media of the left. The left. We had to pay as a, a crowdfunded survey to show that the public opinion is against, in her majority, no newspaper had ever made one. Probably propaganda to, uh, to surrog surrogacy is paid from agency. Italian law also forbids propaganda and advertising to surrogacy. So the media um, uh, work uh, giving a positive representation of it, I am ready to bet that many media take money under the table for this job. For the surrogacy in Canada and in Quebec, it's a little bit uh, different, so I will uh, explain to you. At the present time, altruistic surrogacy is permitted in Canada. Uh, now the situation is a little bit different in the province of Quebec because we have a French heritage, uh, civil law, and uh, from the rest of Canada. But pressure, pressures, pressures are, are hard to allow uh, commercialization. I will explain. So in Quebec law is unique in Canada because Quebec is the only province in Canada to have a juridical legal system under which civil matters are regulated by French heritage civil law. Public law and criminal law and other federal uh, law operate according to Canadian criminal law. So uh, the surrogacy falls under family laws, which is the civil code in Quebec. So there are two clauses of regulation regarding surrogacy that prevents surrogacy uh, Practice, practice to take place in, in Quebec, even altruistic uh, uh, surrogacy in Quebec only. So the first one is the legal recognition of the mother. In Quebec, the legal recognition of the mother is the, uh, the woman who gives birth. And uh, also Article 541. So um, the Article 541 says that uh, any agreement whereby a woman undertakes to procreate or carry a child for another person is absolutely null in Quebec. So that's why surrogacy is not a common practice in the province. People who want to access parenthood through surrogacy go to other provinces because they know that if the surrogate mother decides to keep the child, the contract will not be recognized in court. So elsewhere in Canada, Article 541 does not exist. So that's why it, it takes place in other provinces. 
So at the present time, government of uh, Quebec plans to modify its civil code next fall. So a committee of experts have already recommended the repealing of Article 541 in Quebec and the Ministry of Justice seems very open to LGBT claims of their rights to become parents using assisted human reproduction, which is often intentionally confused and mixed with surrogacy. Canada has the Assisted Human Reproduction Act since 2004, which forbids the commercialization of surrogacy. Uh, so uh, in section two, the acts read as follow. The Parliament of Canada recognizes and declares that trade in the reproductive capabilities of women and men and the exploitation of children, women and men for commercial ends raise health and ethical concerns that justify their prohib prohibitions. At the present time, there is a Bill, 6, uh, Bill S216 deposited in the Canadian Senate last February that intend to repeal this paragraph I just read and to allow the remuneration of surrogate mothers. The surrogacy in Ukraine is a very complex problem, so I will get through some stages of to dive into the whole situation. So first, the first thing um, I'm starting with is the surface of uh, the general problem here and how media portrays uh, surrogacy in Ukraine. So first of all, Ukraine is one of the countries where surrogacy is legal, even though many conservatives in Ukraine are against this. But the problem with conservatives is uh, they are shaming women who do surrogacy, but not the businessmen who run it. If you look upon articles concerning surrogacy here, you can only find some PR text where clinics promote their services. They portray surrogacy as if it's helping people who cannot have children. And very rarely they talk about mothers uh, and uh, they struggles with diseases and injuries, uh, same as mental and physical because of the surrogacy. If you try to Google surrogacy in Ukraine, in Ukrainian, Russian, or even in English, there will be about eight to 10 advertisements before you can reach to the actual articles. But even if you, re if you reach those, there will be no actual critique of the issue. They usually define surrogacy as surrogacy is the way for women who have no uterus or suffer from serious illnesses to get gen genetically native kids. As we can see, they switch the focus from surrogate mothers uh, to those who exploit them. The average price for the services are from 6,000 euros to 30,000 euros, and of course it can correlate a bit. Uh, the biggest sur sur surrogacy company here is Biotech.com, and the founder of it is Albert Tachulowski, who is a pretty shady person. Uh, he's a German citizen um, who also has a Moldovan citizenship and only a residence permit in Ukraine. That's why Ukrainian surrogacy is so popular to Germans. And uh, even though Ministry of International Affairs, they uh, have never monitored how many Germans buy kids. That's how I called it, because it's actually buying kids. Uh, because in Germany, surrogacy is banned, so they, those uh, parents, they can face some, you know, like uh, actual sentence. That's how Albert, the founder himself, talks about surrogacy in the interview. Average woman's salary is half of the official salary, salary which is 4,000 hryvnias. About, it's about uh, 140 euros. For this tiny salary, they are being fully exploited. They uh, try to feed your family with this amount of money. Even if she knits, spins, does something else, machines do it faster and cheaper. And surrogacy and egg donation is a highly paid job. I'm also talking about the fact that these are holy deeds. A new life is born, it's beautiful and useful. So in the minds of uh, women, we, uh, what can be better than to have a good salary and at the same time helping people make making a holy deed. 
So uh, now about the inner situation. In uh, 2018, one journalist, uh, she decided to investigate the inner situation of this business. And uh, uh, so she called, she pretended to be a surrogate mother and she called the Biotecom to become one. And I will read some parts of their conversation. So um, they said to her, quote unquote, uh, we will test your blood, urine, and gynecologist will look and immediately will give you a pills to drink for 21 days. Then you come to us for injection and it's done to combine the monthly cycles of a surrogate mother and a donor. Before it, drink another complex of vitamins. We have bioparents, we will make replanting quickly. You arrive at, it, at the embryo replanting in the morning. So right away, just call them. Not any preparations, contracts, uh, not any testings, health testings, just immediately give you the pills. So then the journalists go to the building uh, and it's literally a building like a house. It looks like a house uh, of biotech come and immediately points out that it looks like a brothel. No signs, no names. The only thing that identifies it as a surrogacy the clinic as a, is a bunch of pregnant women standing in front of it. As she enters, she says, a lot of women are standing in the corridor. Workers constantly call on them uh, to look at some German men, and it's only Yuri, Hans, the names. Only the classic box with shoe covers at the entrance and the girls in medical uniform and the receptions without badges. Reminded that I got to the medical facility. So now, I'm going to cross linkages. Um, so the quarantine finally activated some form of discussion in Ukraine and only because the borders being closed so that buyers can take their kids. And they actually opened the borders for buyers to take what they have paid for even, and, and they even put the kids in the national Ukrainian clothes, which called Vishivanka. So it was a celebration. And the article, uh, I will post the article in the chat. It said it was, you know, like portraying it as a, those mothers, they help those parents that, that can't have kids, like a charity work or something. So uh, one of the doctors, a uh, reproductologist says, I'm um, quoting her, the average surrogate mother in Ukraine is a woman aged about 30 years usually with a secondary specialized or even higher education, but one that does not bring material wealth, teachers, nurses, doctors, engineers. Uh, she continues, the standard situation is when their own children get sick or when they have nowhere to live. I'm also, she says um, that I'm also a mother, so I understand how terrible it is. In order to feed their own children, they agree to help someone, but for, com but for compensation. Is it is this exploitation, she asks, she asks her, herself. And that's where I came to the point that people, they second guessing if it's really exploitation or not. I'm more than sure people subconsciously are having this feeling of surrogacy being very obviously close to prostitution, but they are again justifying it with consent as if you're getting a salary and signing a contract uh, then it's not an exploitation, completely ignoring the circumstances. And this also reminds me about just world hypothesis. But of course, the problem is not only women who, not, not only that women who decide to do surrogacy are struggling with money, which is the other part of the problem that connects with generally poor salaries and especially for women in Ukraine. Uh, but I have to clarify here, I'm not saying that uh, this, this problem is less important. I'm saying it's not the only problem. The other problems that come with surrogacy is the general conce concept of being an exploitation of reproductive labor, making women's bodies being an incubator, an object of service, and making children an actual product that you can buy. This is... Uh, pure dehumanization uh, in a nutshell and not only uh, and not only physical problems due to often pregnancy pills that you have to take etc come with this but also mental problems same as for mother and for kid many women they struggling with depression and crisis for 
from giving their child to someone else. Many kids trying to find their real mothers after they found out the truth. It reminds me on how prostitution and pornography tries to split the spirit from the body, e.g. this is not happening to my body, uh, this is happening to my body, not to me, and how women suffer from self-harm then and uh, inner aggression and, uh, and not infrequently it eventually ends up with suicide. The legal aspects of uh, surrogacy from uh, the British perspective and then move on to the UN, which I've had some contact with, and also the Hague for uh, what we call what they're calling trans trans uh, legal laws, which they're trying to bring in on surrogacy. So there's three, and I'll try to do it as quickly as possible. Britain is known for being the uh, lead in uh, technological reproductive um, technology. The first child was born uh, in the 1980s, the, te the test tube baby, and it's regulated. In 1985, surrogacy is now regulated by the Surrogacy Arrangements Act. And it's defined in terms of the surrogate mother and surrogacy arrangements. The law states surrogacy is not a commercial enterprise, but one of altruism and the part on the part of the woman who can expect reasonable expenses. They don't qualify what reasonable expenses means. The Human Fertilization and Embryo Act 1990 and Human Fertilization Embryology Act 2008, HFEA as it's called, um, also defines the Surrogacy Arrangements Act. They have the overarching uh, uh, authority over what terms, uh, what terms can be arranged in this surrogacy laws and what can and can't be done with gametes. There are two acts, as I've said, provides guidance on the legal definition of parentage, post-birth and how the baby is transferred to the legal parents, the, from the mother to the commissioning parents who I think are fake parents. I call them fake parents because they're not the real parents. Um, they apply for parental orders once the child is born, uh, and these laws apply to anyone, single parents, um, gay couples, uh, and, and anyone can, can apply to uh, engage in surrogacy. Agency can choose for various services. It, it's quite um, complex. Parental orders, are, is the process by which the surrogate baby is transferred from the legal mother to the commissioning parent. The process requires application to the UK courts and has strict guidance on who can apply. This takes time. Uh, however, in UK law, the mother can at any time during the transfer process change her mind. And the transfer process can take anything up to a month to six months. And that during that period, the child, the surrogate child, has to stay with the new parents, right? And one of the questions that, as feminists, we ask is, you know, what is the product and what is the service? So what is the product of all this? Is the product the child? Is the service the woman? Or is the service the woman? And the, you know, it, it, it is a combination of both. And currently, there has been a lot of lobbying that calls for the parental orders to be abolished and that the child is handed over to the new parents immediately so there is no breathing space for the mother. Thus I would posit that this deprives the surrogate mother of mother rights and I think we need to hang on to that because mother right is a very important concept because in the UK mother right is relatively short history Women were only enabled to have control or any rights over their children since the 1920s in the UK. I'm not sure how that operates across the globe, but I would say that those mother rights are relatively uh, new to most countries. The UN Rights of the Child, on the other hand, uh, has set up a commission uh, relating 
which began, the rapporteur began by looking at the abuse and trafficking of children in porn and uh, the sex trade. And through that work that was done by the UN, uh, she began to get worried about, is surrogacy buying babies? Is the surrogacy market a market, a bought market? She intended to report on this question in 2019. And it seems to me that she's been uh, what you might call <laughs> um, captured by the surrogacy lobby into stating that outlawing the global um, commercial surrogacy is the aim and that uh, altruistic surrogacy is okay, but with lots of stringent rules and regulations. And that moves us on to the Hague Conference, uh, which is uh, for private international law. And this group of um, lawyers has been sitting since 2015, and they meet once a year to discuss the rights of the surrogate child. What they want to do is to have transnational rights for the child. There's very little mention in any either of the UN concern about children or the Hague uh, legislature uh, about the rights of women. Uh, that's that we are told by the UN it goes in the women's it, under under women. It, it's not together, which is an unusual concept, uh, really. Um, the purpose of this sitting committee uh, in the Hague is that uh, they want to make in, it's very complex jargonese. Provision for the inclusion of a general private international law instrument on the recognition of foreign judicial decisions on the legal parentage. That would be the convention. And the protocol of the international surrogacy arrangement would be a separate protocol on the recognition of foreign judicial decisions on legal parentage re rendered as a result of the international surrogacy arrangement. What they're trying to do is to make it. There's no question that surrogacy is wrong. This, this is this is my grief about all this. When within both the international endeavours, women as human females are rarely, if ever, mentioned. In the slew of states' different approaches to surrogacy, some have it, some ban it, some have got some partial laws. Uh, the right of the child as I think one of our other panelists mentioned, is what exercises people's concerns. How do babies born to surrogates inside one state transfer their statehood to another country? What about the rejected babies? What about exploited women globally? The increase in men commissioning and buying babies for money in foreign states. It's not unusual for men to commission two or three surrogates at a time to get immediate children. In the work of the Hague, I looked through the minutes of their last meeting because it was interesting. And one of the things in about point 27 was, um, what do we call these women? The lawyers were confused. They didn't know whether uh, to call her a surrogate woman or a surrogate, but they definitely felt that surrogate mother was not the correct terminology to use when uh, looking at the legalities of this. Again, um, it's looking, looks to me as if what they all want is the fast tracking of transferring of these children from the mother to the, the buyers, uh, which I find quite frightening, actually, um, which reduces the mother right, which reduces the mother's self-autonomy over the children. Uh, it's assumed that surrogacy is altruistic and not commercial, that it is not different from, that there is no difference. But there is difference because it is trafficking babies, but in reality babies are commodified. The woman is farmed like cattle. Her uterus is used often several times to provide a product under the rules of child safeguarding. Commercial surrogacy is sliding in as the norm. In France, 
every surrogacy, as um, Marina said, anyway, it's the same that in Italy, but in France, every surrogacy contract is void according to the fundamental principle that the human body can't be sold. This principle is called non-patrimonialization of the human body. Such a law prevents surrogacy in France, but doesn't prevent commissioning or intending parents to go abroad and get into a surrogacy contract. Uh, I have studied the laws of different countries and noticed that forbidding surrogacy is possible at a national level, but there is no way actually to prevent transnational surrogacy or procreation tourism, as we are used to call it. Uh, countries in Europe, countries that account for two thirds of the population in the European Union, don't allow surrogacy on their territory. In fact, according to the European Charter, saying that people are in tidy and integrity of their body, surrogacy should be banned anywhere else in the world. Should be banned, sorry, should be banned in all Europe. But if human body can't be sold in Europe, it is really unfair to allow it anywhere else in the world. Such a double standard, standard is the key to women's exploitation worldwide. Alors, in Asia, it's something is very, it's very interesting what's happening over there because uh, from India to Nepal to Cambodia to Thailand to Vietnam is something different. They are all closing their border to surrogacy. And they are all have, they, they, they went through very, very, um, uh, very, very strong scandals of baby being abandoned, of, of uh, women being exploited, and uh, countries after countries, they stopped surrogacy or they restrained or they regulated surrogacy. And what is also happening is that, as it is a business, it's a market, um, some agency, agencies, some surrogacy agencies, uh, for example, from India or Georgia, uh, try to expand their market or try to avoid uh, surrogacy being um, forbidden in their country, and they went to, went to other countries. There is a very interesting example about Kenya because um, Indian surrogacy agency are going to Kenya right now. Georgian, um, um, Georgian clinics are expanded to Kenya. 